Sky Howdy, and welcome back to another episode of World Bigfoot Radio. From Zombie Media Publishing comes the amazing true story of a Sasquatch investigator. The true story of how one researcher discovered a family of Sasquatch living in a remote area of the forest. Follow along as Leo Frank chronicles his journey from hopeful researcher to unbelievable and undeniable discovery. Read details that have never been told and could only be told by Leo himself. Filled with photos, trials, hardships, failures, and ultimately, success. Sasquatch Family Ties is wowing audience and receiving five-star reviews. Stephen Kohler writes, Leo Frank's Sasquatch Family Ties is clear and convincing, simply a joy to read. M. Donald says, captivating, a generous and brave offering. You are sure to enjoy Leo Frank's Sasquatch Family Ties. Make sure to pick up your copy today. Now available on Amazon in hardcover, paperback, and ebook form. Sasquatch Family Ties is proudly published by Zombie Media Publishing. And we're back. And with an epic episode this time, somebody that wanted to get back on the show for quite a long time and with a uh, follow-up to some of the amazing stuff that was happening to them the last time we left off. But before we get to that, do not forget to click that like button. Please subscribe to the channel and share it to your friends and groups so others can find it. This channel is not monetized. I've got a swag store with all kinds of cool stuff over on Teespring. T-shirts, hats, mugs, posters, whatever. Lots of different designs. Go check it out. That's one way you can help. If you want to help directly, my PayPal is in the comments section below. Please use it early, often, repeatedly. And thank you. If you do use it, you get your name on the list at the beginning of the show. The associate producers and the other people that are involved and making sure the show keeps coming to you. Uh, I'll have a little bit of update at the end of the show on what's happening over here, why you haven't been seeing any uh, field research videos from me, which mainly has to do with mechanical issues and lack of funding, but I'm actually getting some help with it. So <clears throat> let's continue on with the show here, and we are going to be having the return of the troll with his buddy Leo Frank, on here to tell us the rest of the story. And so welcome back to the show, Leo. Good evening, sir. Great to have you back here. First question before we get any further, say anything else, and I forget to ask you, MK Davis wants to know, what kind of camera were you using when you filmed Oshasha? It, well, it was a full film camera. Uh, I have to go back and see what kind of cell phone I had that year, but that's easily found out. But I, I'll get back to him, tell him I'll, I'll uh, hook him up on Facebook and let him know when I find out. All right. And let's see what else. Christy says hi, and she says the Sukulu, I uh, think Carl is uh, uggy. <laughs> If I still went in the woods, I'd pass that along, but I'll have to pass on that one. They pretty much say that about every other Sasquatch on the planet. Oh, they're not good looking like us. That one's ugly. No, no surprise there. So, yeah, the last time we left off, you had just come back from uh, a hiatus caused by background issues in life. And uh, this was after you had finally gotten those really good pictures of... Uh, Carl, as you call him, and then after that, and you got some video of a young female that we never even got to talk about. So uh, let's kind of go back to that point and start up right there. So the year that I got the first uh, Carl pictures, uh, 
I was still in the mindset that I wasn't supposed to. What separates Area 1 and Area 2 is a creek. And there was a game trail on the other side that was blocked off by logs. And it wasn't, it wasn't just that. It was, it, if I went over near that, it didn't feel right. It was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to go over there. Uh, so the following spring, I go back logs are gone and so is that i wouldn't say dreadful feeling but just back up a bit feeling it just i i, I didn't feel right there i mean that and that feeling was gone so i talked to a couple of people and i said yeah, to hell with it I'm, go I'm going over across and i'm gonna see what it's like over there i got over there completely different it was like a whole other world over there. Uh, as you know, in, in, from Area 1, I mean, that's a lot of pine. And, I mean, Area 2, there's a lot of pine, too. But everything was, like, glowing green. It was it was really green on the other side because you've got the river, and then you've got you've got the stream, and then you've got swamp there. So everything is really bright green. It's just wild over here. So, and, of course... Right away, finding the the arches with the X right by the swamp. Um, so I'm like, all right, well, this is obviously he's living here because at that time I I I was 99% sure he was by himself, and I was 100% wrong. He was not by himself, not by a long shot. Hey, he let has, me let me cut in here for a second, compare and contrast what's happening up in my research area because we went across the river several times before we actually managed to get communication lines open with them and we're immediately told don't come across the river like this is our area we don't want you over here so now the only time we cross the river is if we're uh unfortunately we had already established their gifting area on the other side of the river Love it. <laughs> so we kept that that way but other than that we're not allowed to wander around over there and the last time which is before we got this information from them that we went over there, uh, Mike and Aaron and I all crossed the river and they went straight up the embankment and I went up the hill on the other side of the river to get as, fa as far up as it would go to get a look at camp from up above, <clears throat> at which point I got mobbed. So, yeah, I mean, if I want to go risk my life and uh, get some great group photos of lots of Bigfoot glowering at me over my shoulder go back across the river again but I'm not inclined to do that
I, I, I didn't, that was the thing. I didn't get any anything verbal or otherwise. I just knew I got, I would get to the edge of the creek and like, I can't go over there because this, you know, the fe- completely different feeling. It's hard to explain. I'm sure you you run into it. Oh yeah. Uh, you just know when when you've gone far enough, and if if you don't pay well, attention. Well, you to getting that? that uh... That heavy, creepy feeling, or were you getting the feeling that there's like a lot of eyes watching you? No, I, I, I didn't feel like there was a lot of, eye, of eyes watching me because, like I said, I had myself 100% convinced he was by himself. That's why I was terrified he was going to die during the winter. Because, let's be honest, he's not the healthiest. He's a lot healthier looking than what, than what I thought he was, but because I only had that one experience to go by, right? So. Right, and I know at the time you were thinking he was just regular old Bigfoot, and why was he so skinny all the time, and it's almost winter, and where's he going to get enough food, and he's still skinny. Why doesn't he put on any weight or anything? He's kind of built too skinny for a Bigfoot. Well, I mean, he's got one parent that is and one that isn't, but I don't know what what the other parent is. So, like, thanks for the teaser. Thanks for the look. Yeah, we think it was probably a troll, but who knows? Because he sure looks trollish. And that was confirmed by Solvig Fulkerheim on the last episode. She of Crypto Sweden, who has done a lot of research on that. When you look in the into the to the Micmac legends here, the nose is they have they're not necessarily called Bigfoot, but I mean they're large and they're hair covered. Uh, Micmac tend to tend to focus a lot more on Wendigo and, and things like that. Yeah. But when you do to the Micmac legends, they have a a wide nose from top to bottom. Like, yeah, okay, that that could be it then. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I can't disagree that he looks that way. But I mean, Osha's his daughter, so and all of the rest. I mean, he has a brother that looks like Gabe Kaplan. So, <laughs> basically, what was That's the next cool. chain of chain of events? Then, so you you decided to go across the river, and it didn't have the creepy feeling anymore, and it it looked like normal woods. And then what happened? Well, I mean, it 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 didn't have a creepy feeling. I mean, I was edgy myself, but I mean, I did that to myself. So, but no, no, there was nothing being coming at me to to, to creep me up. Um, so. Basically, leading up to uh, OSHA's footage, uh, I've been in maybe three, four days prior to that and turned around and snapped a picture because I could clearly hear something. uh, There were some downed logs, and I could clearly hear some shuffling going on over there. So I turned around and saw something black, took the picture, uh, brought it back, and I thought, okay, that's definitely not him. So, and then I had 110 people tell me that's that that's a black bear. Don't go anywhere near there. Stay out of there. It's a black bear. Like, man, I live in Nova Scotia. If we don't see a black bear, if we go in the woods, if we don't see a black bear every few years, there's something wrong. So, that's not going to keep me out of there. And it wasn't a black bear. So, so now I've got this one that I'm almost 100% convinced is, is another Sasquatch, but I, I couldn't I couldn't call it on the spot. So three to four days later, I'm in there, and I know when when Carl walks, he has the typical thump thump kind of thing, and then if you stop, he'll land one more. Uh, I didn't really, I didn't know that at the time, but when I, when I looked down over, see, there's a second creek that runs there, runs through there, and when he, he, he was down there and stepped up over that creek and put his hand on the tree, and just as he did that, there was a snap behind me. So I said, all right, well, I'm going for picture of the video, because this is crazy. Because there's too much shit happening all at once here. So uh, I 
snapped the camera on and she took a little peek out behind the tree and all right here we are i'm i'm now in the middle between carl and whoever this is it, this is not a place i'm comfortable in friendly or not get to this point i'm not comfortable being stuck between carl and whoever this one is peeking around the tree so i hear her run like at least move backwards so I immediately pan over to the left because had she gone right or vice versa, whichever way it was at the time, um, had she gone the other way, because people often ask me, how did you, like, did you know she was going to run that way? Like, well, had she not, she would have went face first into the river. So she only had one way to go. She could have ran straight back. But if she was going to do that, she wouldn't have let me catch her, you know, tree peeking. Out. Right. I, I wouldn't have known she was there. So, uh, for whatever reason, she ran across and I didn't know until that night when I went over the video and I mean, I watched that thing over, I was probably up till three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, just watching that over and over and over again. And I said, she, she's pregnant. That's, she has got to be pregnant because there, there's no way, uh, that, with a belly like that, that she's not pregnant. And I, I well, either that it. or she's been pillaging a lot of beer at somebody's house, one or the other. <laughs> no, she was pregnant. And, uh, and she, and that was summer. So she gave birth in, I believe, the end of summer, but I, I didn't get to see the young one until into the fall.
But anyway, yeah, that's, I'm going completely off onto the whole OSHA story. Um, so after that, I'm, I'm finding tracks that obviously don't, don't, um, uh, match Carl anymore. So I know, all right, we've, he's a male, she's a female. And at the same time that I was filming her, there was, I broke between, I hit the photo button and then back to the camera button by accident. And where I ended up, there was a little one right just above crotch level in the bushes ahead of, like right in front of me. And I didn't have a clue she was even there. Now, when Osha had stopped running, she was gassed. And I mean, she was like, she was completely gassed and she turned her back. When she turned her back, I said, that's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pursuing this any further. And I've caught hell from so many people. Like, why did you stop? Why do you stop at these times? And why do you stop at this time? Because it's not my, it's not my shot to call it. If I wanted to keep, wanted to keep this going, which I did, I'm not going to go chasing after her. Yeah, plus you can get killed doing that too. So, well, yeah, well, and that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm in between a, uh, a male and I, from what I could see at the time, I uh, I knew female, but um, as it happened, it, it, she was a black streak. The only way that I knew for sure she was female was when she stopped by the tree. I I could tell, and she, she turned her back slightly to me, and like, no, this isn't right, and. People are like, well, you should have kept doing this. You should have kept doing that. But put yourself in, in that situation, that exact, exact situation, and then come back and tell me what I should have done. I did the right thing by giving her her space and hauling my ass out of there because that's exactly what I felt I needed to do. And you get in situations like that and you don't listen to your gut, you go missing. So, yep. yeah, yeah, you put yourself between a male and a female – not knowing, I mean, this, I, I went on for weeks thinking this is his mate. It wasn't his mate, it was his daughter. Yeah, but you didn't know at the time. No, well, that's what I'm saying. That's the time I didn't know. I thought that was his mate. So I right. got what I got when the chief was gassed and turned her back. I said, nah, this isn't right. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting the hell out of here. And I did. All these armchair quarterbacks that you should have done this, you should have done that. Oh, hey, armchair quarterback, your fat ass should have been out there filming it. And then you can tell us about how things happened when you did it. Meanwhile, you can just shut the hell up because you're apparently too worthless to get out there and film anything. And uh, quit trying to pick on people that actually do have the balls to go out there and do something. Enough said. Well, I'll say, I, will, I, will, I agree, and I'll say this. If you are stuck between, a man, you know you have a male Sasquatch behind you. And you, you're pretty sure that what you had just run in front of you was a female, or any other, for that matter. You pursue even as long, half as long as what I did. I didn't go running after her. I just tried to follow what my my objective was. I wanted to see if I could, if she had ran through anywhere where I could get a decent track, and then get the hell out of there. But I mean, in in, in the situation that I was in. No, I wasn't going to. What else is there to film? Uh, film except me running. So <laughs> nobody needs to see that. That's not a pretty picture. Yeah. Well, as far as that goes, I mean, I've been in a couple of situations, too, where you know you're being watched. You can feel eyes, multiple eyes on you. And in both those situations, I just whipped out the camera and started doing a pan. <laughs> that's like there's my best defense maybe they'll think it's a laser cannon or something and just you know whip out the camera they'll re react to cameras by running away from them but at both of those times too well the first time i wasn't sure that there was anything there of course after i looked at the video i found out yeah i was surrounded the second time i actually did see one of them and i had that heavy creepy feeling of many eyes watching me and, uh, you know, I just played it off like I didn't even realize they were there. And just kept going through the motions, filming, <laughs> hoping they wouldn't squish me.
And there's plenty of instances in there, especially with, with his brother. Uh, there's no actual, there was no actual issue as far as I knew, but he was a very stern looking dude that is stern, stern is still with the book and they look like Gabe Kaplan, but, uh, he has no had no interest, and as far as I know, has no interest in having anything to do with me other than standing back watching his doctor his, his daughter throw rocks at. Him. So <laughs> they don't mind the kid like her, him, and his mate don't mind the kid being out around me. There's always one of them with him, generally him. Um. Don't mind her being around me, but he doesn't care. He does not seem to care to have anything to do with me whatsoever, but has also never never gotten aggressive. When I was filming his mate climbing a tree, I got a warning by a couple of wax on the tree behind me, and that's, again, it was, well, why did you stop filming? But she said, I just filmed a Sasquatch climbing a tree. Yeah, That's not enough. I'm not, did I have to, do I have to stand there and like die in front of you people. Yeah. No, you got to go run down to the base of the tree, climb part way up, pull a hair sample out of its foot, run away, take it back to the lab. And I, and I mean, this is a small group of, of people and they're like, well, why did, why, why do you stop filming? Well, because I value my life and believe it or not, uh, after all this time, I value their privacy. I know it may not seem like I do, but I do. Well, honestly, if you if they don't want to have anything to do with you and you don't know how to be polite, you're never going to get close enough to film them anyway. No, and and th that's what I mean. People can you can you can think you're calling the shots. You're not. No, nope. not calling any. Yeah, and all those guys that think they're calling the shots, let's see your Bigfoot pictures, liars. Yeah. They're calling the shots, and every year this this one's going to be the year. It's always going to be the year. They don't get anything because they're, they're never going to get anything because the Bigfoot already the, the Bigfoot already looked at, did a survey on them and the survey said gong you suck so you they're never going to get anything checked. well exactly you've already been checked out they all knew me the whole time that here that I was thinking that Carl was by himself they all knew me I don't I don't try to convince myself otherwise. They all knew the whole thing. We're probably having a hell of a laugh over it. The little little hairy hairless man there thinks there's only one of us. Yeah. So what changed about about me, you know, being basically allowed to go over there? It's their land, so they they allowed me to go over there. Yeah. What changed there to 2018? I don't know, but it did, and I'm glad it did. Well, if nothing else, they just made a decision that they had been interacting how many years have they been around you by then uh with carl at the time of those pictures i believe it was four four years maybe maybe a little bit more and yeah. i i had only ever found in the, in the gifting area i had only ever found i think one track that i said this does not this doesn't match his tracks because he has Big thin feet. 
And this was this was shorter, like fourteen, fourteen, and and a little bit inches, uh, and quite wide. So I like that kind of threw me, but again, didn't uh, maybe another one passed through or whatever. But until I got over there, I I, I had no idea what what I was in for. That's interesting for me on two points. First of all, about four years in is when they started actually uh, going, okay, this guy may be not too bad. <laughs> we can let him come over here. And then my area A, that's about how long it took with me before they started actually showing up near camp and being interested generally when I was there and whatnot. And this is way before I ever left them any goodies or anything. I was never... I, w- I never gave them anything until they gave me something first, actually. They gifted me twice <laughs> before I ever gave them anything. <clears throat> but the other thing is the uh, the numbers of them. Uh, both of my main areas have been going to for almost 10 years now. And, you know, prowling around those areas a lot, looking for tracks, finding tracks from different in- individuals. And I thought I had a pretty good head count on how many were likely in each area and it turns out I was off by a factor of about four like in one area I thought there was maybe a half a dozen no there's like two dozen of them there well I mean I I found this I was honestly I was a little pissed off because I I found that everything was kind of dropped on, on me all at once as exciting as it was, it was like I had a to, lot. Yeah, that's you know one thing after another, all within two years, and then uh, you know some really special things happen that had never happened to me before, and it, it was really really good for a long time until it came to an abrupt end and turned really, really bad. And I would be lying if I didn't say that I missed them, but I, I'll never never go back there again. So how much time were you, uh, what was the next major event after you got to cross the river and Chase Oshasha around to get video of her. Next major event after her. Well, the, the, the next major event actually happened that day, and that was the first accidental filming of uh, the little one. She was roughly about nine years old at the time, and I had no idea that while I was filming Ocean, uh, she was there until. You know, I watched it over and over again. I'm like, well, what is that thing move that that's moving in the in the bushes? And then I see the top of her head with not braids, not dreadlocks, but the thicker cornrows. They're very thick cornrows. So I okay. could see the top. I could see the eyeballs. So that that in itself, that was that was pretty wild so that was that either that night or the next day that she was spotted so was, uh, no wait no was that in the video with Oshasha or was this something you shot the same day no it was at the it was shot the exact at, at that event I'm I'm standing there with the camera looking for Osha while, to see what if she's gonna you know dart back out or what she's gonna do and while I'm doing that, in the bushes directly in front of me, there is a there's a small one that could have reached out and punched me right in the gut. Uh, big guts. Reached out in and punched me in the guts at any time, and I had no idea she was there the whole the whole time. But yes, this is during the the, the filming of, of OSHA. She was sitting right in front of me. Oh my god. Well, I can uh, say that I've been equally as oblivious. I don't feel bad. Uh, One of the videos I just referenced earlier where I had several of them and I was panning around. I was looking at the one off in the distance about 40, 50 feet away, standing at the edge of the tree line, which was huge. 
And I was going like, is that a stump or is that a Bigfoot? That kind of looks a lot like a Bigfoot. So I just kind of played it off and continued with my pan, a little realizing that about 15 feet in front of me where a couple of trees had fallen down, there was a, a Bigfoot right there with his face in that pile of brush looking at me. And as I brought the camera across him, you can see his face turning. Yeah, that's what gave it away with her. She, it, I, it looks to me like she was about about to get up, or at least turn because I, her head turned, and that, that is that's that's eyes, that's the top of her head, and no. she to get up. Now I didn't obviously. I know she it's a she now. I didn't then. Oh, well, again, you know, it's like we both know what we're looking for. We're both trying to see him. We can't see a damn thing. And I probably would have never even spotted him in the video. Christy Sci-Fi is the one that pointed him out and went, hey, there's one right here 15 feet away from you watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, duh. I was busy panicking about the one that was 50 feet back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me later. I got my own word. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, it got worse. There was actually a couple more right there that uh, are not quite nearly as obvious, but they're also there. So, And, yeah, these were smaller, younger ones, too, so I don't know if that turned out to be the case with you, but it seemed like after they got used to me being around, then I was like amusement for the kids. Oh, our favorite humans here. Kids, go follow them around and keep an eye on them. Do your sneaky practice. It, it was, I mean, and mainly her because the other two, her, uh, Osha's was uh, still a baby, uh, and Keisha, the one that I filmed in the tree. Uh, <laughs> every time I think about that, when I think about the person that I showed, which was the person I was dating that at the time, um, I said, you, you've got to see what I caught today. So I handed her the cell phone. And she's looking at it, and she's I, I pointed at the dark spot out on the tree. And she was sitting there and looking at it. And basically nothing happens there for a couple of minutes, and then you see her bring her leg up. She brought her leg up, and my ex almost jumped completely off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> From that day on, she did not go back anywhere near those, those woods at all. There was a place where she would like to go walk. She'd like to go walking. I'd go in to the research area. She'd go walking on the other side of the lake. So, uh, but yeah, that that stopped. The minute she saw her leg move, <laughs> that stopped. So, <laughs> it's not imaginary anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, a, a black, a big black thing on a tree. Well. Could be a million things. <laughs> yeah, you see, see, start seeing body movement, then, and it's very clear. Then, uh, I mean, it only leaves so many possibilities. And man, for the short period of time that video was actually out, I have heard every possibility from some of the smartest people that in the world, and but some of the stupid things that I have heard them say. One of the things that pops up with me that I kind of find humorous is uh, people that have been doing the research for a long time and they get a new girlfriend or spouse or something that are like pretty dubious about their claims. And then what happens when they finally find out it's real, often, oftentimes pretty hilarious. Recently, Robert Boston uh, got himself a pretty new lady in his life and he's over here in the U.S. now, retired from being Bigfoot in Germany. And he decides to go camping, which he almost never does anymore. And he says, well, we'll go up to this lake that I used to camp at when I was a kid. This is a really beautiful spot. So they get up there, and they're setting up the campsite and everything. And it's just the two of them up there. There's nobody else. And she's looking across the lake, and she's like, hey, what's that over there? And he looks up, and it's a huge female Bigfoot. <laughs> and he says, oh, that's a Bigfoot. And she goes, huh. <laughs> Then you, when we when we get to the to the point where where uh, that bad, the bad event that you know about there happened, that was basically Becca and I started dating in 2019, and that was basically her because you get you have to go through that weird 
conversation. When, when, when you go out as much as, as people like you and I, well, in my case, did, um, you sooner or later you have to tell why and where you're going. Otherwise, it starts to become very suspicious. So, well, you know, the best one is when the wife gets too suspicious or the girlfriend gets too suspicious and they check your cell phone to see what kind of pictures you got from partying around with other women. And all the pictures they find on there are Bigfoot shots from the woods. <laughs> That's basically all she would have found, but she was completely cool. I said, I t- I said this is what I do, and this is why. And she was like, awesome, can I see one? <laughs> I I don't know. And um, unfortunately, the first time was horrible and terrifying, and it sucked, but... We went back up, and I haven't been back there since, but we we have been back up on the mountain, and she's the one who actually got the second picture of uh, the one at the, at the brook, the one that's looking at me down in the water. She's the one who took that picture, and she's there like, awesome, and snaps the picture. Wow. Like, okay, well, what do I do now? <laughs> Nothing. Continue what we're doing. Now you if go you on to her. <laughs> <laughs> now you do all the Bigfoot conventions on Earth for the rest of your life. You go on tour now. But uh, yeah, so the, the, this one, it was it was very easy. There was no, there was no. I wasn't getting suspected of cheating or anything like that. I was like, nope, um, uh, that's that's not my thing. I track giant hairy people. Well, God bless the Sasquatch up here. They're really kind to me, and they realize that I'm I'm so terrible at spotting them that I'll never be able to film them. So occasionally they photobomb me, just so I can find them in there later on. Oh, okay, photobombing. Um, so the net. So you asked what the next major event was, and it's I don't know if it was technically the next major event. But it was one, and I believe I sent you the picture. Um, if I sent you a picture that looks like nothing but hair, that would be the next event because I was doing an over the shoulder shot. Like on my way out, I oh, always God. do over the shoulder shot. Oh, God. Just in case. Oh, God. You know, you could. You're could, you going to make it, buddy, or what? And that's everybody's worst nightmare, and you can solve that by simply having a GoPro on your back so they don't follow you that close. Oh, God. Well, what happened was I never saw a thing, never heard a thing, never <laughs> felt any impact on the ground, haven't got a clue who it was to this day. But I sent it off to a photographer. I said, is there any way that sun, shadow, anything could have done this? And she's like, no, that's for a man. That's her. <laughs> like, okay. You're like, please tell so, me that shadow. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's painfully obvious when you look at it, what it is. I was just, I was hoping, but so somehow it was enough to completely block out anything else that was behind me. And I got a nice big square picture of hair and all kinds of it. God. So that was, uh, I, you were talking not long ago on one of your shows about the little game of running up and touching a human and getting it taken off. Yeah, uh, counting cool. I think, I, I think this was this was similar type deal, like run up and get as close as you can, but don't let them know you're there, and mm-hmm. we'll have a good laugh. So, so I think that, that, that one I found amusing. It, it wouldn't be necessarily be a big deal to anybody else, but. To me, yeah, I, th- I thought it was funny. Oh, uh, no, that's terrifying to anybody else. It's not amusing at all. You're walking around <laughs> in the woods by yourself. You take a picture over your shoulder. Oh, there's a wall of hair right behind me. Gee, I wonder what that was. <laughs> oh, probably just a really hungry bear that's ten feet tall. It was about to mug me. I never, I never felt that way at all until until the end. I didn't. I never felt that way at all. Before. I mean, if they're comfortable enough to introduce me to their baby, then I I, I, I felt I was pretty safe. So, yeah, with that um, group, 
Yeah, and 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 that that was the problem. And I was safe until 2019, and I wasn't safe anymore. So that was the end of that. And it sucks, man. It really sucks because how many times? How many? I'm never going to have a chance like that again. But I'm not going back there either. So was a hard right away. It wasn't a hard decision, but. It's hard to stay. It's hard to stay away. I'm, I'm not glad that I can't walk right now. <laughs> but if I, I know if I could walk, there's been days where I'm awfully tempted to at least try. But you know, um, I was okay going down the rabbit hole. I was not going. I was not okay with going all the way down. Yeah. So before we get to the the unfortunate end of the story, was there any other? major incidents i mean like how many times were you out there with them oh my god um, dozens yes wednesdays and wednesdays saturdays and sundays and that was pretty routine so yeah for so for uh, the the entire year 2018 uh but either way still can't whether I went in from the back way or the front way, and people that haven't listened to the old, our older shows together kind of know what I'm talking about, but uh, no matter which way I went in, I would have to wait until well into spring before it was dry enough for me to even get in there, regardless of which way I went in. So for the entire year of 2018, uh, it was it was awesome. The whole the whole Experience is awesome. I got my first handprint. Um, uh, obviously, the first one I've ever filmed in a tree, climbing a tree. Yeah. Um, uh, Proving Dr. Uh, Muller was wrong, and they do climb trees. <laughs> well, I think what well, the handprint. What I think what happened was there is a on the back of the property. There is what I believe at one time was a stagecoach trail, but was now uh, a, you know, for four wheelers and such for the family that the closest family to the area that they would go from their place to their grandparents' place on four wheelers. So I think what happened was he went, he went to step over the road because I felt the, the footprint was it was one left footprint on the other side of the road and it was it had a bit of a slide a little bit of a slide to it i think he kind of fell backwards and reached down to, to brace himself and i think that's what that's how the handprint came to be Could but you be. know what the hand, that handprint was gone the next day footprint still there drying out handprint was there so it was gone what that's weird. Now, why, why get rid of the handprint? And leave the footprint. Hmm. Maybe we're only allowed to find footprints. <clears throat> I'm just joking. Kelly Shaw was telling me that they were following a female, and uh, one of the w ways they could tell she was a female is because she kept, she was on the steep uh, bridge that she was going up, and every so often she'd put one of her hands down. So she had like one hand that was never coming down. She was carrying something. The other hand occasionally would come down and be used for balance. Well, and 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 this one going by knowing the track, it was it was Carl's brother that it happened to. And what cracked me up about it is his general disposition. Anywhere's near me, I would I would imagine. Had I been there a few hours later, or a few hours earlier, uh, he'd have been damn pissed off that I that I would have seen him fall. Oh, yeah. But, if you saw him wipe out, you might be dead right now. I, I, don't, I, can't, I don't know. And I, I can't. Uh, until 2019, I never felt anything like that. I, I felt no, obviously... I know, don't ever think that you're 
buddies and pals with them. Don't assume anything with them because it's, you could be in for a very rude awakening like I was, but, um, but yeah, I, I didn't, I, know, I felt at times like, okay, this is, you're too close, kind of frig off kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but never, not, not with that one family. And well, I mean, they're all family. It's just a matter of who's related to who and who's in there as a mate and all that. But, uh, I know they never made me feel that way at all. Quite the opposite. Well, just as a cautionary note to everybody listening in, even if you find the ultimate best case scenario where there's a group of Bigfoot that are fairly amiable and after enough time, they'll kind of interact with you on whatever limited basis they do. You can come up there to visit sometime and, you know, maybe there's something else around up there that you need to worry about. Or maybe who the leader of the group is abruptly changed and the new leader of the group doesn't like humans. So you always need to keep that in mind. You can never walk in 100% confident that everything's going to be hunky-dory. Uh, you know, maybe one of them's just having a bad day. And if they friggin' give you a sign that you're too close or if they don't, don't push yourself. It's it won't pay out in the end. Don't push. Tr- don't try to call the shots. I'll, I'll repeat it a hundred times during the show. You're not in charge. You're not calling the shots. You're not going to trick anybody into being seen that isn't going to allow you to see them. You're not in charge of anything. I, I realize we think, we, I realize that we think we're the, the smartest beings on the planet, but we ain't not by far. You ain't going to trick them. They're not going to fall for it in all likelihood. And whether they do or they don't, they then won't trust you anymore because you're trying to trick them. And we had one time where we left a little audio recorder, a little bitty one, that would sit in a cup holder in a folding camp chair and be out of sight. And uh, Mike went to his tent and I went to my tent. We went to sleep, left the audio recorder going, and we checked it out the next day. And about an hour after it started up, you can hear both of us from both directions snoring. You can also hear footsteps walking up to the audio recorder. And then you can hear what sounds like a finger tapping it twice. And then you can hear footsteps walking away from it again. And we're not fooling anybody. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you want them to trust you, then you better quit trying to trick them. Leave, go in light. Leave all the the heavy equipment and go in with yes. If you get a chance to get a picture or video and you want to, and, but don't think that you're going to make it happen. No, not. Nope. 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 And you got to make it fun and entertaining for them too. If you're not interesting and entertaining, why the hell should they show up? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) the little one there when she, I actually named my cat after her. And that, that's something that bothered me about a lot of the trash talk that people did about me there for a while. Like, yeah, all right, so in your mind, I'm a brilliant liar. Well, I'd have to be more than a brilliant, brilliant liar. I'd have to be a complete psychopath to name my cat after a Sasquatch that doesn't exist. Uh, <laughs> like, who the hell does that? Yeah. But it, anyway, with yeah, her, it, it was, the, I know, well, 99% of of what's said is completely ridiculous, but they just throw it out there and try they hope that something sticks, but when you get to the point of showing them, uh, well, no, you're wrong here, and this is why, then they don't want to talk to you anymore for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand that. I guess that goes back to that one episode I did years ago called Smackdowns for Skeptards. The thing is, they're hardcore believers that haven't seen anything, and they're mad. At, they're angry about it. They yeah. are hardcore believers. Nobody completely engrosses their life with this subject that is not at least a hardcore believer or a no. No. Didn't the same thing happen with Paul Freeman? As soon as he filmed that video, everybody in the Pac West that was a Bigfoot researcher took a dump on him and said he was a hoaxer. 
why because they spent 30 years spinning their wheels in the mud finding nothing and they didn't like the idea that somebody else could just show up out of the blue and actually get video of a bigfoot and a bunch of tracks etc etc well too bad so sad he did maybe you just didn't pass the test and the Sasquatch decided you suck, and that's why they won't get near you. Now, Paul paid for getting that video, too. If you ever heard his account afterwards, he spent like a half an hour praying to God they weren't going to kill him and that he'd make it out of the woods alive again. They were not happy when he got that video. And But that's the thing. I don't understand, and to this day, I, I have no idea why she would risk such a thing being pregnant i why would she risk that i i it doesn't make any sense i mean i obviously carl knew and therefore i'm sure she knew i was no threat i, I all i carried was what i would bring in to gift and the cell phone so i mean i, I was no threat but why why she felt that she just staying behind that tree wouldn't have been good enough. I don't know. I, if it was me, I asked for the stayed was behind the tree. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it was more, it was, it was frightening to a point that night. I mean, as excited as I was and everything, the fact that I had that little one right, right there in front of me and had just, uh, filmed her and Carl behind me and everything. I, when, when I did calm down and thought about it, I was like, man, I was in a bad friggin' spot. Uh-huh. Really bad spot. 